Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got in front of me is one of the Chaos Cultists from the Blackstone Fortress range, very similar to the ones that are in the Kill Team boxes as well. And I've painted them up to try and resemble the fellas that you see as the dregs in Darktide, because man, everybody's playing Darktide and I'm in some real trouble. I think that's going to be my, my Christmas splash for myself. Uh, but obviously when you've got something that looks so striking on screen, you know, when you've got a, a moving representation of the Warhammer 40,000 universe, how do you not then try and put that into miniature form? So I've got here a fellow that I've painted using not too many paints for a change of pace, and there's not really a lot of complex highlighting or what have you either. This is just base coats, a bit of a shade, and then very simple highlights. So all of the paints will be listed in the description below, along with the base recipe. Let's get started. Now, unfortunately folks, real quick off the top, my camera crashed while introducing this. So what you wanna do once you've got your cultist assembled is to go ahead and prime them with a black spray. It does not matter which one. Then I've given them a really quick overbrush over the top with some Rhinox Hide, to, just to introduce a little bit of warmth and depth to the miniature. Uh, it doesn't matter, don't get too hung up on which brown you use, Thondia Brown, Katachan Flesh, anything of the like, just a dark to medium brown to make things a little easier to see as well while we work. Now as with any miniature, the way we're going to do this is to start from the lowest layer and work our way up. So the lowest layer on this fella is probably going to be his trousers. I've got Mechanicus Standard Grey, and this will cover very nicely. Uh, when it comes to colours on these guys, you'll notice that they aren't exactly uniform in-game or uh, on the product description pages, on the website and what have you. You can mix up grey, sort of a beige colour, and greens as much as you like. So don't feel as though you're stuck with what I'm showing you here. But Mechanicus Standard Grey is going to be my choice for this fella here. You'll see here as well that his uh, leg wraps, or the covers that are holding on his boot straps, uh, these fellas I've also covered with grey, not because I want them to be grey, but that will be easier for us to paint over later with a lighter colour. Next up I've got here Xandri Dust for his tunic. And uh, this is one where we're going to slow down a little. And you'll see it covers fairly well, but you're going to end up still with a little bit of the uh, primer showing through. So once you've applied this first coat, just spot anywhere that you need to come back and give it a second. Uh, but the important thing with this is that when it comes to games like uh, Dark Tide or Vermintide and what have you, what you're painting for is threat recognition. Uh, if you look at the, you know, the main guys, the bulk of these infantrymen, they don't have any really distinguishing features. They're just brown and gray and metal. And the rest doesn't really matter. Where you start seeing slightly more dangerous opponents, like we are going to do with this guy, is where you start seeing those little splashes of color, bright things that stand out. So eyes, uh, different colored armor and such like that. So if you are painting, you know, minions later on, just skip some of the cool stuff we do later. It's important that you do let each coat dry before you apply the second, otherwise you're just going to lift it off. And Xandri Dust in particular has this funny sort of green quality to it if you've still got the primer showing through underneath. So take your time there. We'll move on now to painting some of the things like the chains and weapon accessories. And here I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel. Now it's not very often that I will call out the brush I'm using specifically, but here I'm going to use, this is one of the STC brushes, it's a medium one. Uh, mostly because a synthetic brush, I don't feel so bad about jamming it into some of those little uh, links in the chains. Now I've chosen here these spiky things on his chest to paint those in with silver as well, because they kind of look like additions to the armor uh, rather than being original plate. Now speaking of that plate though, what I've done here is mixed up a metallic black. And here I've used about four parts Abaddon black to one part lead belcher. Uh, you can experiment with what you'd like the look of. And to be quite honest, if you can get your hands on it, Vallejo's metallic black will also work perfectly well here. Now on camera that is a little bit difficult to see, 
but in reality it's a black but not quite with just a little bit of that metallic fleck to it so it looks really cool. Now something I should have done before the armor and particularly if you've got faces inside helmets is to paint his skin and I'm going to lay down a layer of Bugman's Glow particularly with the helmets if you paint the faces in first you can tidy up around the edges with that black but whoops don't listen to me. <laughs> Now depending on which miniature you're painting is going to change this step quite a bit. I'm going to paint in any wooden details. Now here I'm going to use Mournfang Brown because it's one that I quite like. Sort of warm wood. And given that we've used greys and yellows and stuff so far, a little bit of warmth on the miniature is not going to be dreadful. So particularly on the skulls, let's go straight over the top of those. Now here's one of those splashes of colour that I mentioned from earlier. We'll use corn red and we're going to paint the stripe uh, that appears on some of his gear. Don't worry too much if it's not a perfect straight line because you can go back to that uh, black silvery mix you've used and straighten it out if you need to. Now, this does appear in a few areas so make sure on his wrist, uh, gauntlet, wrist strap, whatever you want to call it, get that on there too and oh, this not sure if you can see it from that angle but we'll paint it on his uh, boot as well. I've also painted in a little patch on his chest in that same color uh, just to give him a bit of balance. What I have now this is Moon Dust from the Army Painter. And it's the only one from outside of the uh, Citadel range that I'm going to use and you'll see why as it goes on. This stuff covers absolutely brilliantly for such a light yellow. So what I'm going to do uh, anywhere that you want to put down some hazard stripes Moon Dust is a great start for that. So I need to sort of tickle it on first of all. But you see since it covers so well I can come back once it's dried and just go straight over the top again. So I'm going to lay down, there we go, fourth stripe. I've been a little more fussy there than I probably needed to be uh, but you can very easily tidy that up with your black armor mix from earlier. Now this cape thing that he's wearing, I was going to paint it red until it occurred to me, wait, let's just lean into that three color aspect from earlier. So what I have is Death Guard Green. And as you're painting these guys, you can just swap the positions that these colors appear on. So I might paint uh, gray trousers on one fella, then swap to gray shirt for the next, and so on. But for this guy, I figure... The cape, that ought to be the star of the show. And since Nurgle seems to be <laughs> the, uh, the bad guy involved in Dark Tide, let's go with making Death Guard Green that big area. Then we'll spin him around, and I've got here Morgast Bone, which I'm going to use to paint in the leg wraps, and I'll let you guess the bone as well. Now this is one of those colors that is going to probably need two coats in some areas. When you're watering down your base paints though, you don't want to really thin them out very much. Uh, not the way that we're using them anyhow. All you want is just enough uh, water in there that it will flow easily when you apply the brush to the miniature like that. So you see we still get some of the gray showing through, uh, but we'll cover that over with one more coat rather than sometimes when I see you folks out there watering down your paint to the consistency of really terrible cup of tea and then uh, complaining it takes 20,000 coats to get done. That's why you don't need to thin it out as much as you probably are. Now the last of the base colors I'm going to apply is Katachan Flesh and we'll use this for any leather details. So his holster here, the straps holding his wrist plates on, that sort of thing. One thing I did forget to mention was on his faceplate, I've just covered in the mask itself with a little bit of lead belcher, but that's really up to you. From here, it's time to shade our miniature. What I've got is Agrax Earthshade. This is a part of the new stuff, and I'm using this mostly because if you go into a games workshop, this is what you're going to pick up. So I've given it a really good shake, and I'm loading up my brush. What we'll do now is just start jamming it all over the miniature. You really want to take a second to work it into the recesses, uh, but try not to drown your miniature in this because this new Earthshade, um, it does, it's a little more gloopy 
is the easiest way to put it. It's more reminiscent of the contrast line. So keep your brush moving in the same direction as much as possible while you're applying it, and you'll get a smoother finish to your shades. One way or another, over the entire miniature, then we'll leave this for about half an hour to dry. And when at last that has dried, what a difference that makes. When it comes to highlighting this fella, we're actually we're not going to really go to many highlight colors at all. For the most part, and particularly for his clothing, we're going to go back to the base colors that we've already used. So for his tunic, for example, I've got here a little bit of Zandri dust again. Let's get him in shot there. And what I'm going to do is just lighten up some of the higher areas of the tunic while leaving the shaded stuff in the recesses. And this way, we still get a little bit of depth, uh, but we don't have to go overboard with three or four different colors to highlight every bleeding thing. So I'm going to go around now and do this with the green as well and the gray. I've also applied a little of that Morgast bone to the skulls and flipping them around, you see we get plenty of depth and a little bit of texture but you don't have to go mixing any more colors or highlighting with a third one if you don't want to. But speaking of highlights, what I have here, this is Vallejo Model Air Steel. Now you can stick here to, uh, what is it? Storm, Storm Host, Storm Car, Storm Host Silver. The really bright one, basically. Um, I'm using this because it flows just a little more easily off the brush. So what I'm gonna do is highlight some of the, the steel but also, if you're using a very fine brush, nice and slow and methodical about it, you can do little chippy flicks at the edges of uh, armor rather than trying to highlight it with anything and paint a straight line. So just dip, 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 very gently, as and where you like, to accentuate those edges to make it look like it's been dinged around. So up on the shoulder here is a good example. Let's get him in focus. We'll just add a little bit of steel at the edges and create a random chipped effect. We don't want a straight line. So I'm gonna do this over pretty much all of the metallic stuff, just to give that a little bit more visual interest. And with just that one color, you can highlight all of those areas, which is nice, real quick to do. It's a Something worth practicing is the easiest way to put it. The temptation will be to have too much on your brush at a time. So remember, just a tiny wee dot here and there will help with the brush control. So speaking of, I've got here some white scar and I'm gonna very carefully dot in his eyes. And then to make these glow, we'll get a little bit of Plague Bearer flesh and just paint that very carefully into the socket there. Maybe a little bit more on my brush. There we go. Now I've watered down over here some scrag brown, and what I'm doing now is just painting it into areas that I want to look all scrunkly and rusty. It's not really possible. I reckon you can go overboard with this if you're trying really hard, but uh, well, that might be a bit much, for example. But anywhere that one area of metal meets another, or you know, basically any way that you want to make a little bit of visual interest on that black, you can just dab a little bit of your scrag brown and get a cool rusty effect. Now you'll see as that dries, you get a nice mellow finish to that rustiness. It's always worth thinning it down too much uh, for the first couple of times you apply it because you can put layers of it over the top if it doesn't really show up, but it's difficult to take off if you put too much on. So experiment with it because it's easy and it's fun but uh, yeah mind that you don't go overboard so what i'm going to do is now hit this fella with a matte varnish go ahead and pop a base on him i'll pop the recipe for that in the description let's get a look at this dude once he is all finished and there at last our chaos cultist is complete now i've had a lot of fun painting this guy and i think just by adding a couple of tiny details like the splashes of red and those hazard stripes, you get a neat way of making these guys fit in a little bit more closely to the way that the video game looks. 
Now other colors I'd suggest, things like Carrick Stone for the shirts maybe, there's all sorts you can do. And I think you'd have a lot of fun in coming up with a ragtag appearance for your mob. Now when it comes to playing with them, Kill Team as a solo game isn't something I'd ordinarily think of as being a laugh, but I reckon if you were to relax your, your operative selection rules, turn around, take four of whatever the hell you want, and then just put down masses, <laughs> have a whole bunch of bad guys painted, and tweak as you go how your spawns work, you know, run the, run the enemies on a very simple AI tree, because that's how a PC would do it, I think you'd get something which would be fun. Uh, working out the balance would be something to have a play around with yourself, but I really think that would be something to, to have a go at as a hobby project a little unusual compared to just painting these things. Anyhow, I'm really rambling. That's for you to have some fun with. As always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Andrew, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.